Is God good? And all the time. All right. All right. It's good to see you guys today on this Wednesday. Um, you know, there's a story that comes to mind. One of my favorite stories of my life. One of my favorite stories of my life. Um, there's a gym that is located in Sunrise, Florida. And every Sunday, I want to say from when I was 15 to 25, we would go to this gym and play basketball. Now, mind you, I'm not as athletic as your pastor. I'm not as athletic as, as Michael Jordan. I'm not a great basketball player, but I like to play basketball. I like it. It's, it's good exercise. It's good exercise. And so, on this particular day, this was a strange day. The sun raised a little bit early. You know, people were at the gym a little bit later. But normally when I get there, I'm not the one to be picked. But unfortunately, this, this, this day, it, it was a great day. I, I, I was the first to be picked. And we get on the court, and every time that I shot the ball, it went in the net. Every time that I shot the basketball, it went in the net. It, it, was, it was crazy because we were playing against people twice my size. And every time that I shot this basketball, it went in the net. And when we were leaving the court, my, my best friend at the time, his name is Lorenzo Wright. Lorenzo said to me, he says, Aaron, what is your secret today, man? Because I've never seen you play like this. You played better than any of these basketball players, I said. All I told him was, my heart was in my shot. My heart was in my shot. The title of today's message is, This Heart of Mine. Amen. This Heart of Mine. Let us pray. Our gracious and kind King, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you that at this moment, Lord, you know, we're here today on this beautiful Wednesday, this beautiful noonday service. And so now, Lord, you have a word that needs to be said to your people. So, Lord, I just ask that you speak to me, you speak through me, and you use me. Lord, you take these loaves and these fish and you multiply them now, Father, I pray. I thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to move. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. It says here, this, this heart, this heart, this heart of mine. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalms chapter 51, verses 9. Psalms 51 verses 9 through 11. Psalms 51 verses 9 through 11. And it states here, it says, God, it says, turn your face away from my sins and blot out my guilt. God create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't banish me from your presence or take your spirit from me. Now, we know this story very well. This is the story of King David. King David made a very, very tragic decision. He chose to do some things that would not only offend man, but it would offend God. And so at this moment, David was writing and he was saying, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, I, I remember all the time conversations I used to have with my mother. And my mother would have these conversations with me and she would always say, Aaron, you don't love me. <laughs> she used to say that to me. And when she used to say this to me, this is, this is when I was younger. She doesn't say it now. She said, when she used to say it to me, I used to always ask, well, mom, why would you say that to me? You know, I love you. I love you, mom. You know, I'm coming here and I'm going to give you a kiss on the cheek and I'm going to sit next to you and we're going to have a good conversation. You know I love you. 
And she says, last night, before you went to bed, I asked you a question. And your answer was yes. But when I wake up in this morning, those dishes are still in the sink. Now, we have to understand something. When we say we love someone, love is a very strong word. But love is not just a word. It's an action. If we say we love God, there's a way we need to behave. There's a way we need to move. We have to understand something. If we love God, it's said in his word, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we have to understand that our hearts sometimes are not supposed to guide us. It's not supposed to guide us. There's a lot of people who say, follow your heart, follow your heart. If you follow your heart, you will go down the right path. But it says here in Jeremiah, turn with me to Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, it says here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah 17 and verses 9 and 10. It says here, the heart is more deceitful than anything else and uncurable. Who can understand it? I, Yahweh, examine the mind. I test the heart to give to each according to his way and according to what his actions deserve. We have to understand something. We cannot let our hearts guide us. If our hearts guide us, it will lead us to something destructive. But if we let God guide us, we possibly will, we will reach success. Now, you have to understand this. There's a, there's a thing that we normally use every day. If, if I was to call you and say, listen, I have a special lunch dinner for everybody in this room. I'm going to text you an address. And when I text you this address, you're going to put this into your phone, into your GPS. Now, what does this GPS do? GPS is a global positioning system. It will guide you any spot on this earth. Now, God has given us the same GPS. He has given us this same GPS, but his GPS is totally different. God does not have a global positioning system. God has God's personal service. He has a personal service for each individual in this room. Now, that personal service is used through his Holy Spirit. We have to spend time in communion with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can guide us to where we should go. It says here, the heart has its reasons. That reason does not know. We come to know the truth, not only reason, but still more so through our hearts. We have to give our hearts fully to God. Sometimes when situations happen, we let our hearts guide us and then we'll say it was the spirit that told us to do so. When we know that it really and generally it was our hearts. We cannot let our hearts guide us. We have to constantly commune with God. I was having a conversation this morning uh, with my significant other and we were talking about Jesus. And the one thing that I always appreciated about Jesus was that Jesus would carve out a time in his day early in the morning and he would get away from his disciples. He would get away from the people and he would spend time with his father. Now we have to understand something. If we are to be successful in anything that we are to do, we have to carve out a personal time with the Holy Spirit. Carve out a personal time with God. Because if we don't, then we will be leading ourselves. And you have to understand, we need God to continue to lead us.
Now I have a couple of texts here jotted down that we should go over about the heart and this heart of mine. One, if you would, to turn with me to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 and verses 21. Word of God states, and I'm reading from the CSB version, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The thing that you treasure the most is where your heart is. What is it that we treasure the most today? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it finances? Or is it our heavenly Father? We need to put our treasures fully in God today. Turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5. Proverbs 3 and verses 5. It says here, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. We should not rely on our own individual hearts. Our minds need to be in tune. Our hearts need to be in tune with God. That when people see us, they see Jesus. Turn with me. We're going to stay in the same, the same uh, uh, book itself, the same uh, Proverbs. And it says Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 23. And the word of God says, guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. We have to be careful who we give our hearts to. We cannot put our hearts in things fully on this earth. Our hearts need to be rooted fully in Jesus. We're going to stay in the same book. I want you to turn with me to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23 and verses 26. Proverbs 23 and verses 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. The same point that we're going over today is that God has to be the center of our hearts. He has to be our focus. He has to have our hearts. And in order for that, we have to content, spend consistent time with God. It says here, heart is used in scripture as the most comprehensive term for the authentic person. It is the part of our being where we desire, deliberate, and decide. It has been described as a place of conscious and decisive spiritual activity. The comprehension term of a person as a whole, his feelings, desires, passions, thoughts, understanding, and will, and the center of a person. This is the place which God turns. God wants to turn our hearts, but we have to give him our hearts. And that has to be a consistent daily situation. Sister White says the greatest battle ever fought is not between God and Satan, but God himself. And we have to give God our moral compass, which is our hearts. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to a, a, a special chapter that we all know, which is found in John. John chapter 14 and verses 1 through 3. It says here, your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If not, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Now, we have to understand this one thing about our hearts. The heart may be deceitful, but one thing that we know about God is that God loves us. God has a book here that has promises that he keeps every single one of his promises. He's not like man. 
that if we keep a promise, sometimes we don't keep our word. I can tell you right now, I can say that I love you and tomorrow that we are going to get together and have us a good lunch. But who's to say that I'll make it till tomorrow? But what we have to understand is God is the same today and forever. There's no life expectancy on God. God will always be there for us. So we have to stay committed to God. The same one that said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalms. Psalms chapter 37. Psalms 37 and verses 4. Psalms 37 and verses 4. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. God has so much he wants to give to you. He loves you. He's going to be there, and he will give you your heart's desires. I remember when I was young, and there were games that we always used to play, handheld games that we always used to play. And whenever you would get these particular games, you always would have to remember one thing. They would always say this one thing, batteries are not included. You get the game and you're so ready to play the game, but at the end of the day, when you get the box home, if you do not have the batteries, the game can't work. And what I'm here to tell you today is that if we do not have a strong conviction with God, life is not going to be the same. Our heart cannot go down the path it's supposed to if those batteries are not included. So we have to stay close to our Father. It's a poem here I want to read to you real quick. It says here, What is love? Ask the child untouched, whose mother's hand he clutched. His tender heart knows only trust. He feels only love, knows not of lust. What is love? Asking the blossom soul, questioning her life's role, struggling to separate, infatuation from love's fate. What is love? Asking the youth enlightened, remember passions hided, wondering if it is, was an act of love, or if not approved by those above. What is love? Ask the united one, whose ring reflects the golden sun, hoping it will last forever, that they will always remain together. What is love? Asking the furred face, moving with a withered pace, it remains all around me. To its treasure, I've not found the key. What is love? I cannot explain it. It clues extremes of happiness and pain. I will never understand love's many hues, yet I always know that I love you. Now what we have to understand is that God loves each and every one of us. We've told in the word that God is love. The heart is not love. God is love. Stories told of a young man who can bench press 450 pounds. Now, mind you, I can't bench press 450 pounds. 
But this man was a very strong man who could bench press 450 pounds. So every day he would go to the gym and show off that he was one of the strongest men in this particular gym. Get up and he would up his reps. He would up his sets. He would constantly say, listen, there's no one in this gym who can out bench press me. So one day he decided and got beside himself and said, we're going to throw 10 more pounds to prove that I can lift 460 pounds. And as he gets underneath this bar and begins to lift, his arms start to struggle. He can't breathe. And he severely injures himself. Now what you have to understand is that when you're lifting weights, there's an importance to lifting weights. You need a spotter. You need someone that when you know you cannot manage the weight, someone will be there to spot you. Today I'm here to tell you that despite what you may be going through, despite what your hearts may be dealing with, despite all the drama that the world is doing to you today, there's someone to spot you. And his name is Jesus. Jesus said to come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You have to understand, Jesus' burden is light. So we need to let Jesus spot us today. That he can come in and create in me a clean heart and renew your right spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity today. We thank you that you are a God that will always be there for us. We understand that the heart wants what it wants. And a lot of times the heart will lead us down a path of destruction. So, Father, we thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit to be your GPS. We thank you that you've given us Jesus to be our example. Now, Lord, help us to give him our hearts. Help that when he's knocking on our heart's door, as it says in Revelation 3.20, that we will open the door and let him come in and sup with him and he with me. Now bless us today on this Wednesday that we will remember that even though we have hearts that will deceive us, that we have an advocate in Jesus and we have the Holy Spirit to guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.